What's up everybody, Jameson Redding here with the Road Trip Angler. And this week we are down in the southern tip of Florida chasing after snook and peacock bass with Chris Funk. with the ones to see a wee cause everybody wants to fish but can't nobody make the trips but don't trip cause we gon' make it when you can't miss out road trip bang the only thing we need is a rope no doubt Florida has to be one of the most fishy states in the country. I mean, you've got tons of fresh water, you've got tons of springs that pop up, rivers that literally start and end in the same state, and you've got salt water surrounding the entire state. You've got the Gulf and the Atlantic side, so it is a very diverse fishery, and it makes it really easy to hit both fresh and salt without having to drive very far. Good thing we ain't catfishing. No scales, just skin. <laughs> no nudity, no fires, and no drones. Hey guys, I'm Chris Funk. I've been a long time buddy of Jameson Redding. He's drove me through many, many adventures. You can't fry nothing, and you can't get naked. You think there was like one guy that was standing out there by a fire, naked, flying yeah. a drone? And they were like, <laughs> you can't do all that. You can't do none of that. That's like a hat trick of what you can't do. There is nothing more frustrating to me than just completely like forgetting something. You know those fancy torpedo motors that I got? They require something that I might have left at the house called a battery. Oh no. <laughs> About an hour away. <laughs> oh. oh God. So we actually made the decision to try some more backwater, some canals where we would have a little bit more protection and we didn't have to go quite as far away from the boat ramp to get to our fishing spot. And we were like totally all in to saltwater fishing. We had saltwater rods, we had saltwater bait, and then it came back like, oh no. So we had to spend quite a bit of time just literally going everywhere, trying as many different places and just looking for any sign of life. Is that a big lizard? Look, look all the way at the far end. That's a big one. That's a grown one. Driving down the road here and just happened to look over and saw a tarpon rolling in this little ditch. Come on, man. Uh, Try to I fish. promised I'd behave. I didn't promise how long I'd behave. You're out here trying to make something happen, you make mistakes, forget things, and then someone wants to play games. Thank you. And now we're just trying to make them force feed them, I guess. Jameson already had one swat at it, so we're trying to see what's going to happen. I put the little crappy <laughs> jig on. You can have a plan, but you better actually keep it pretty loose because that plan is going to have to change in most situations. So frustrating. Wish I had my fly rod. Sometimes plan A don't work out because of conditions. So what are you thinking? We just go back? There are definitely critters out there. That's the frustrating part. Because <laughs> his, his pin is this little boat ramp right there where you saw that boat at. Right. But... I don't see anything other than whatever this road is that goes sideways. This is the one that goes kind of... Sorry. This is when you goad your friends, when they're trying to do a difficult backing and turning, then you, you egg it on a little bit, it makes it totally worse. All you had to do was back right there and then loop out. Oh man, there's so much water. I mean, you look, we're up on a bridge and you can see just water out there. And that's gotta be three or four miles across. It's just canals going. There is water everywhere. And you would think that any time you see water, there should be fish in it. My only worry is if you get a big open area like that, you're not gonna have as much wind protection where if you've got taller mangroves. You guys don't like paddling. I don't mind pedaling. It's gonna be harder for him just to be able to hold. Right. 
position to film. We ain't too far away from where that one canal goes out across. And on the satellite, it looked good. It all looks good. That's the problem. It all looks good. <laughs> Rig them on the ground or on the. Uh, good gosh. If you drove for three hours to get here, they park a half mile in the water. You do not want to get tangled up with the no seams without a good dose of this. I've never been here. I really have nothing or no expectations on what we're gonna find. I know the water's got a little bit of salt in it, but where we're launching, there's hardly even any water. The map appears to open up, so we're gonna go try it out. So, see what happens. GoPro, start recording. Hey, hey, Jameson, right there. That was something ambushing right there in, in that cut. That was a tarpon. I feel like that was a tarpon. Oh my gosh. Eat, man, eat. Oh my gosh, these mosquitoes. Come on, man. Ow, oh, man, that mosquitoes hurt, dude. Look, there's, there's fish on the other side right there. I don't understand why they're not hitting. There's something going on. I see bubbles, Jameson. I'm losing my patience here. I spooked something in there. I spooked it too, whatever it was. We found an area that looked so fishy and there were birds everywhere, but they weren't there feeding. They were there kind of, you know, hanging out. Oh God, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh, sh oh. This is where Jameson falls out of the kayak and everybody gets a good laugh. Wasting that battery on this, huh? And at some point you just have to go, hey, nothing here is saying that there's fish here. Nothing is making me think that. We need to move, we need to go somewhere else. Today on Road Trip Anger, we have forgotten batteries, incredible winds, fish that don't eat, and trails that go to nowhere. Arr! <laughs> so far, <laughs> This is turning out to be the worst episode of the road trip angler in history. <laughs> so we're gonna load up as we've already done and we're gonna head down the road here and just start checking some different places on foot. If we can find something we think looks fishy, we're gonna put the kayaks back in the water. Gotta figure out where to get into it. I can't. Gotta get in there. How do we get in there? See, here's the other temptation. Got deer running around my stands while I'm fishing. Of course you do. Sometimes you find water and you're like, that's where I want to go fish. And sometimes you're like, well, that was stupid and we're never going back there again. Also, you may find places that are like, oh, there's a road that gets you there. But then when you actually get there, you're having to drive your truck through basically a river to try to find fish. Sometimes it comes down to just being a feeling of this looks fishy, let's give it a try. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might, that might be a mine. <laughs> oh yeah, he hit it. Dang it. Give him more time. No, I can't. Peacock. That was one of the target species of the trip. If I hit water, I mean, even this water here, you know, standing, I, I'm going to cast. If I have a, a rod in my hand, I'm going to check it out. That way I'll know, hey, they're active. Two, they're here. Three, I'm throwing the right thing. And four, let's launch and go because this is the place we need to be. As an angler or an outdoorsman, you just kind of get a feeling sometimes when things are happening. We'll start with it. 
I don't know, man. I know you like that razor shed. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to lightly weight Senko. Or does the other one look better? Now comes the fun part. Get the boat back off. Thousand pound boat. Sometimes it's just funny that, you know, you drive past pretty easily accessible water trying to find those fish that are off the beaten path, but the fish are actually right by the boat ramp. Got that one. That's a better peacock. Look at the colors. I put that bullets jig head on the front of that little streaks minnow and just been pitching it along the edge and we picked up a few large mouth and i hooked one over i kind of figured was a peacock and it got tangled up come off and this one boiled on it and on the second cast came back and eat it so what a absolutely gorgeous thank you let's do that again oh oh he come back got it whatever it was I don't know what it, I got him foul hooked, I think. <laughs> it's the right thing. Who said? <laughs> oh, quick release. Got him. It only took forever. <laughs> I think that's a Mayan cichlid right there. Such a cool looking fish. This is a Mayan cichlid. Pretty good size one, I feel like. It's got a uh, Pretty cool spot on the tail. But they got some gnarly teeth. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Look at those teeth. You definitely don't want to lip that guy. These are not a native species to Florida, but they're here now. But we're gonna get that guy back in the water. <laughs> All right, that was uh, not a beautiful release, but he's back swimming. We'll do better next time. I don't know what that is in there. I might have to get one of your colors because they will not hit white apparently. I don't care if you throw a toad, a goat, a frog, you can throw a hot dog as long as you work it on the surface. Oh, I just missed one. Oh, come on, there he is. Peacock? Yeah, on that jerk bait. Nice. There he is. Chris, we got a double. Double! No, don't go in the grass. Peacock. How about a double peacock, pal? That's awesome. Two peas don't make a pot, or I don't know. What are we saying? Me and Chris are two peas in a pod. I can't believe we like put in, paddled around, and now we're sitting here catching most of the fish right by the ramp. <laughs>